Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're, today, we're going to talk about mononuclear phagocytes and sexual transmission of HIV, focusing on the mononuclear phagocytes in the anogenital epithelium and their interaction with HIV. And the major immune cell target in the epidermis of the anogenital epithelium are Langerhans cells and uh, uh, there's quite a lot of evidence that these uh, cells are targeted by HIV, and they may be targeted um, either uh, in mucosa, which has a thin or absent uh, cornified layer or stratum corneum, such as vagina or inner foreskin, or through um, microabrasions, which may even lead down into the dermis, which will become relevant later in this application. And it's uh, hypothesized and to some extent shown that after the virus interacts with uh, these cells in the epidermis, it, they can migrate into the dermis and uh, transfer the virus to the major target cell of uh, HIV, the CD4 T cells. However, there are other potential targets for this uh, virus. Um, and uh, uh, these, uh, although we've, shown a lot of evidence uh, for uh, this particular uh, process. Um, I'm, we're going to show you something new tonight. There are other mononuclear phagocytes in the dermis, the conventional dendritic cells type 1, the conventional dendritic cells type 2, the infiltrating monocyte-derived dendritic cells and monocyte-derived macrophages, the yolk sac or tissue resident macrophages. And we're going to focus on these two here. Andrew will talk about these. And we have just uh, described recently that there is another major target for HIV in the epidermis, the epidermal CDC2 or conventional dendritic cell 2, which Andrew will go into in some detail. Now, these dendritic cells exert their main influence by transferring uh, the virus to CD4 T cells in two phases, which we have demonstrated in monocyte-derived dendritic cells and in Langerhan cells. And these two phases, the virus binds to C-type lectin receptors, is taken up into caves, and then the virus is transmitted in pulses across the viral synapse to CD4 T cells. These uh, uh, viruses within caves are degraded endolysosomally, and so there is a dropping off of transfer over 24 hours. However, the C-type lectins also facilitate the transfer of the virus to CD4 uh, and CCR5, the receptors on the dendritic cells, and replication can occur, albeit at low levels. And this means that um, uh, transfer again occurs across the, uh, uh, the viral synapse, leading to a progressive increase in transfer. Both these phases of uh, uptake and transfer subsequently to T cells influence the function and the transcriptomic profile of dendritic cells, which we have studied in some detail over the years. For instance, uh, the HIV inoculum and its contained extracellular vesicles can induce dendritic cell maturation and also uh, influence the interferon uh, system uh, completely. And I'll come back to that after Andrew has shown you more about what happens in the human anogenital epithelium and authentic mononuclear phagocytes. Moving on to the, uh, uh, the function of uh, dendritic cells, interferons we know are very important in HIV, both from human studies, from SIV macaque uh, models, and from humanized mice. And in the early stages, interferon is clearly antiviral, reducing the viral load and reducing the size of the uh, HIV reservoir, whereas at late stages, it's the opposite. It enhances uh, HIV production and also the activation of T cells. 
So uh, we were quite surprised uh, when we looked at uh, the effect of HIV on interferon uh, production, all type one interferons from uh, monocyte derived dendritic cells. And in comparison to Hopi simplex and Sendai virus, which induce high levels of uh, interferon all types of type one interferons, we found that there was no effect at all when infecting these uh, DCs and macrophages, um, interferon was simply not produced. And we went on to show that this is the interference of, of HIV VPR with TBK1 in the induction pathway for interferon. It, uh, inhibits the phosphorylation and dimerization of TBK1 and therefore the translocation of RF3 to the nucleus uh, and the production of interferon beta which has an antiviral effect on surrounding cells. However, uh, Amazingly, this uh, virus induces a large subset, 25 of them, of interferon-stimulated genes, and all of these ISGs have a common feature of an IRF1 or 7 binding site uh, in the promoter region, and we found indeed that IRF1 bound to this binding site and that IRF1 was uh, critical in the induction of these ISGs, which occurred in two phases. It was initially induced by extracellular vesicles in the first phase, and then in, by de novo uh, produced uh, HIV RNA during the second phase. So if HIV knocks out interferon in its target cells, where do these uh, interferons come from that we uh, see in vivo? Well, I mentioned plasmacytoid dendritic cells, which have been shown to produce interferons in humans in acute infection. And in SIV macaque models, as shown by the Haas lab, one sees interferon producing plasmacytoid dendritic cells lined up under the endocervical epithelium of HIV infected, SIV infected macaques. So in summary, PDCs increase the proportion of blood memory CD4 T cells expressing P24 and CD69. This is mediated by interferon alpha, not by contact. And our hypothesis is that infiltrating PDCs into the anogenital tissue may increase the recognition of locally immobilized trapped HIV protein expressing CD4 T cells, which become like resonant memory T cells. And this allows them to be recognized um, by surveilling CD8 T cells and something we are exploring actively right now. I'd like to thank uh, Andrew and I'd like to thank Nigel and NASA for the interferon work, our great postdoc Kirsty Bertram uh, and Orion Tong and Heva Bahalu and the whole team here, as well as our collaborators, Maz Hanifer and our PhD student doing a postdoc with her now uh, at the University of Newcastle. Thank you very much.